Now there is a new poll out that's making both centrist and right-wing heads explode. Now Gallup uh, recently released a poll on Monday showing support for capitalism among millennials is now at a record low. So let me give you the numbers on that. For just 45% of millennials now view capitalism favorably. That is uh, down from 68% when, this, when they last asked this question in 2010. So it has dropped in eight years, 23 points. I don't know if that, maybe that might have something to do with growing up in a recession caused by predatory capitalism. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, now what's more interesting that since the numbers of people approving of capitalism is so far down, now you have a majority of millennials now having a favorable view of socialism and compared to capitalism. In fact, according to the poll, 51% of millennials view socialism favorably. Now, that's just among millennials, one age group. When you look at all age groups uh, that are included in Democratic voters, the, the results are actually more stark. According to the same poll, attitudes towards socialism among Democrats have not changed materially since 2010. Now, overall, the Democrats have actually had a more favorable view of socialism as a whole, uh, which is 57%. Now, the major change among Democrats has been a less upbeat attitude towards capitalism, dropping to 47% positive this year. That is lower than in any of the three previous measures. So, in its summary, Gallup notes, for the first time in Gallup's measurement over the past decade, Democrats have a more positive image of socialism than they do of capitalism. Now that of course has Nancy Pelosi very worried. After all, she says of the Democratic Party, we're capitalists and that's just the way it is. Well, your voters would disagree. I mean, who if most of your if a majority of your voters, Democratic voters, disagree with that statement and actually have a more negative view of capitalism than they do a positive view of socialism, then you got to ask who the hell is Nancy Pelosi representing when she says, well, we're, we're, we're capitalists. That's the way it is. But anyway, look, when we talk about socialism, we mean things like a jobs guarantee, right? That has majority support. Medicare for all, free college, both have majority support among the American people. That's actually not true socialism, right? Now, that actually means workers own the means of production. That That's the actual... Uh, definition of socialism. What this is, what we're actually talking about in the Democratic Party right now is social democracy, right? Social democratic policies like that of FDR. So let's, I mean, that's the distinction, right? So when, of course, they bring up Venezuela, Republicans always do, um, that's sort of, uh, they're, they're talking about the completely wrong thing now speaking of conservatives uh look their heads explode whenever you talk about these policies that are incredibly popular uh that are socialistic policies uh and of course they immediately begin talking about venezuela and eating rats as we have seen with megan mccain when you bring up some of the policies that again are very popular um and uh you know are being espoused by people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she absolutely flipped out. And she's like, the, the, the average Venezuelan has lost 24 pounds because they're eating rats <laughs> because of socialism. But it's not what we're talking about. And others, of course, fear monger about tax rates. Same thing, especially when it comes to single payer. You're going to have to double taxes uh, to pay for the $32 trillion for single payer. How, how are we going to pay for that? How are we going to pay for that? That's the question that they always ask. Uh, well, according to a Koch-funded study, single payer actually saves $2 trillion a year over the next decade. Oops. Numbers don't lie. But people on Fox News and the right wing sure do. Finds a plan would boost health care spending by more than $32 trillion over 10 years. That would mean a lot of taxes. Dr. Mark Siegel, Fox News contributor, professor of medicine at NYU Langone Medical Center. How you doing, Doc? Great to see you, Bill. 32 trillion. Do you believe that number? 
Yeah, it came out of a very mm -hmm. reputable study out of Get George it. Mason in Virginia. And not only that, to put this in terms that our viewers understand, that's double, more than double the amount of taxes individuals and corporations pay over 10 years. We would have to somehow raise money double what we're already paying in taxes to fund this. So that's a lot of money. So I don't know. Look, there are ways it would save money. It decreases administrative costs. We already know that Medicare and Medicaid are less in administrative costs than private insurance. They would use the block to negotiate drug prices. Those are two savings. But cost, no copays or deductibles. Look, those are disincentives for overuse, Bill. In other words, if you have a copay or a deductible, you might think twice before spending it. But with Medicare for all, single payer, you don't have that. Second problem is rationing. I mean, in Canada, which is single payer, you can't get a hip replacement when you need one. You can't get a stent when you need one. You may have to wait three or four weeks to get a cardiac stent when you have chest pain. I mean, this is a very well publicized problem, and that's what you would see here. Mercantile Center, George Mason University, say you say it's credible? Very credible. Okay, so I love that because here they cited the same store, uh, same study that I just cited, except they left out one of the most important parts of this study. The fact that it actually saves two trillion dollars they don't mention that at all they never mention that because fox news is basically having to spin this this is this is all just trying to spin it to go oh look at how expensive that is we're gonna have to double our tax rates no that's actually not true if you were to add it onto our existing system and that's what they always do they play this tricky math right where they're like no, no, it, it'll cost $32 trillion extra to what we're already paying. That's not true at all, because the existing system would be absolutely replaced by that. There is so much in there, uh, in that segment, that is pure fiction. Again, we already pay more than $32 trillion into the healthcare system. According to that most conservative study, we would save money. There would be a small uh, tax increase, but that would be offset in how much you pay in premiums. You wouldn't pay any premiums. You wouldn't pay any co-pays. Uh, and of course he gets into that um, by saying, oh no, no, it's a disincentive to overuse of care. Who actually wants to go to the doctor more often? No, I actually hate going to the doctor, but you do so when you're, when you're sick. And actually look, when you set up preventative care, that actually also saves money in the long run. That's also in part of the study, okay? Uh, and look, as far as the Canadian healthcare system, uh, rationing of care, that's absolute bullshit. Uh, no, when you have emergency care, when you need emergency care, you are able to get that care, no money out of pocket, none. It doesn't cost you a damn thing. You pay in it ahead of time through your taxes, um, and you never have to pay anything out of pocket. And and look, there's look, here's the thing. You ask any Canadian, they're gonna say, yes, we do get the care we need. So look, and and they overwhelmingly uh you know prefer the system that they have over the American system. And look, there's a reason why we are the only country in the developed world with this system. And it's not because it's so amazing. It's actually terrible. This guy, again, went going to the copays and deductibles, right? He thinks that that's somehow a good thing. Well, because it's a disincentive, right? He's full of shit on pretty much all counts. Uh, but this is, like I said before, this is Fox News. Uh, and so... Here's what they're doing. They're going to smear the, the policy because they're afraid of this policy. They don't like it at all. They know that over half the country wants single payer. And so here they are. They're in panic mode and they spin every single story. And it's not just them too. You also have centrist outlets as well. You also have CNN talking about this. You also have outlets like Politico, establishment uh, outlets that don't look at the context, that don't look at the actual facts because they're not in favor of it. Because they care more about that, uh, you know, the health insurance companies than anything else. So, but look, in reality, this is an example of socialism winning. Now, here's the thing, right? So, they, they talk about how in Scandinavia, by the way, um, they have 
really, really super high taxes because they're socialists. And then they turn around in the same breath and say, well, they're not socialist. Well, they're actually right. They have an incredible mixed market system. They have socialism when it comes to public goods like education and healthcare, and they have a strong capitalist system with really good regulation. They have a mixed market system. That's actually what we used to have here in America until we ceded our public goods to private corporations. And we set up a system where those private corporations will now exploit citizens for profit. That's what this is. And we all know it. And so that's why people are frustrated. And that's why people are looking for a way to change that. And of course, the way to change that is to embrace a socialistic system when it comes to healthcare and education. That's what a good mixed market economy actually does. Now, let me go here to a, a quote here from Common Dreams that I think is very interesting, it's a very interesting take. Uh, While Gallup's latest survey was met with the typical unexpected fear mongering from right-wing defenders of capitalism, which is absolutely true, I just showed you that. Um, and, and let me also mention centrist Democrats who are also fighting against this. Uh, again, you know, you go on Donut Twitter uh, and you'll see in response to some of these policies, no, I don't like socialism. I I'm not in favor of that. Really? Uh, then what about Social Security? What about Medicare and all these different programs that are socialistic in nature? I'm going to ignore that. By the way, vote blue who matter, no matter who, right? Uh, they'll say the same thing in the same breath, but then when it comes to a progressive, ooh, I'm not going to be in favor of that person because they're backed by Bernie Sanders or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, etc. Uh, I thought you were supposed to support Democrats. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of hypocrisy in that movement. Uh, but anyway, um, that take that I wanted to, to tell you uh, is from progressives <clears throat> who looked at these numbers and what you would get from that. Now, progressives viewed the numbers as a good sign. Yeah. But also noted that there is still a, a tremendous amount of work ahead. Uh, the New Republic Sarah Jones, for example, tweeted on Monday, people seem excited about this poll. I just add that it also reveals a need for democratic socialists to educate voters. The decline in overall support for capitalism did not correlate to increased support for socialism overall. And that's a very, very good point. And that shows that when it comes to messaging, Democrats not only are terrible, but Republicans are actually really good at messaging. And it's because they, they don't spend their time coming up with new and good policies to help American, uh, the American people. Their entire platform is basically, we're going to give tax cuts to rich people, we're going to deregulate corporations, and then we're going to come up with some BS social issues uh, in order to attract voters. That's what this is. <laughs> Look, we, we've let Republicans do decades of fear-mongering on anything related to socialism. Again, Venezuela. Before Venezuela, it was Greece, right? Um, in which both of those countries, by the way, there were a lot of impacts from outside forces that led to a lot of this. And so, you know, and, and, there, and I'm afraid that there has been so much programming, right, uh, from the right wing and using their right wing narratives and Democrats picking up, you know, politicians picking up that same narrative that there's a lot of uh, Democratic voters that have just internalized that right-wing narrative. And that's why you hear so many of them say, yeah, that's great. I, I would like that, but how do we pay for it? So that's why, look, we've got to fight to take that narrative back. Uh, and that's why I'm glad that people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, and some of the others, uh, a great progressive champions, are actually trying to change that narrative so we can get it back. And so we can actually finally enact actual good common sense policies that the rest of the world have been able to do. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.